Welcome to the Strange History Podcast. Today we are unveiling the history of the earliest known civilization on this planet, the ancient Sumerians. We will be diving deep into the ancient sands to unravel the captivating story of this remarkable civilization. Our tale begins in the cradle of civilization, the fertile lands of Mesopotamia, where the Sumerians flourished between 4000 and 2000 BC. What sets the Sumerians apart from their contemporaries was their groundbreaking invention of writing. Picture this, clay tablets and a stylus forming a wedge-shaped mark that we now call cuneiforms. They captured the earliest known written records of human history. Cuneiform is one of the earliest known writing systems in the world, and it was developed and used by several ancient civilizations in the ancient Near East, with the Sumerians being credited as its inventors. Cuneiform emerged in Sumar, which is in southern Mesopotamia, which today is modern-day Iraq. Initially, it was a system of pictograms where symbols represent objects or concepts directly. Over time, it evolved into a more abstract script with wedge-shaped marks, which is what cuneiform means in Latin. Cuneus means wedge. This made it more versatile and efficient for recording a wide range of information. Cuneiform was primarily inscribed on clay tablets using a reed stylus. These tablets were then sun-dried or baked to harden the clay, preserving the inscriptions for thousands of years. Other writing services, such as stone and metal, were used, but clay tablets are the most common surviving examples. It was a versatile script capable of representing multiple languages, including Sumerian, Akkadian, Hittite, Alamite, and many others. The script's adaptability allowed it to be adopted and adapted by various cultures over time. Cuneiform script consisted of a large number of signs, which could either be logograms, representing whole words, or phonograms, representing sounds or syllables. Some signs were polyvalent, meaning they could represent multiple words or sounds depending on the context. Writing in cuneiform was a specialized skill. The scribes underwent extensive training to become proficient. They held important positions in society as record keepers, administrators, and scholars. It was used for a wide range of purposes, including administrative records, legal documents, religious text, literature, scientific observations, and personal correspondences. This diversity of usage has provided modern scholars with an invaluable insight into ancient cultures. The decipherment of cuneiform was a major breakthrough in understanding ancient Mesopotamian history and culture. The key breakthrough came in the 19th century when scholars like Henry Rawlinson and others successfully deciphered cuneiform inscriptions. This laid the foundation for the study of Assyriology. While cuneiform is no longer in use today, its impact on the development of the writing system and human civilization cannot be overstated. It influenced later scripts in the region, such as the Akkadian cuneiform and its legacy lives on in the written word, including our modern system of writing. Numerous cuneiform artifacts have been discovered and are preserved in museums around the world. These tablets and inscriptions provide a wealth of information about ancient societies, including their history, culture, and their beliefs. Scholars continue to study cuneiform inscriptions, uncovering new insights into ancient civilizations. The decipherment of cuneiform has enabled us to access the literature, legal codes, and religious texts of ancient Mesopotamia, enriching our understanding of the past. Cuneiform is a testament to the ingenuity and creativity of early human civilizations, and it remains a critical piece of our shared human history. Now, Mesopotamia was not a unified kingdom, but rather a patchwork of independent city-states. Each city-state had its own governance, customs, and even gods. Names like Ur, Yurek, Lagash, and Nippur stand as a testament to their unique legacies within the Sumerian tapestry. The Sumerians is one of the world's earliest known civilizations and was organized into a collection of independent city-states in southern Mesopotamia, which is modern-day southern Iraq, as we mentioned before. It was formed during the 4th and the 3rd millennia BC. Each city-state had its own government, administration, and rulers. Ur was one of the most significant Sumerian city-states and had a major center of Sumerian culture. It is perhaps best known for the ziggurat of Ur, a massive stepped pyramid that served as a religious center. Ur is also famous for the royal cemetery of Ur, which contained remarkable treasures, including the famous Standard of Ur. 
Then we have Uruk, which was one of the earliest and largest city-states in Samar. It was known for its impressive city walls and the Iana district dedicated to the goddess Inanna. Uruk is also associated with the legendary figure Gilgamesh, a character in one of the oldest known works of literature, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Lagash is a city-state known for its prominent rulers, such as Gudea, who commissioned many statues and inscriptions. Lagash had a significant temple dedicated to the god Ningirsu. It also had a complex system of canals for agricultural purposes. Moving on to Nippur, which was an ancient religious center with the temple of Enlil at its heart, it was considered one of the holiest cities in Sumer, and the priesthood held great influence there. Nippur was a place of pilgrimage for many Sumerians. Arido is considered one of the oldest settlements in Mesopotamia and may have been the first city in Sumer. It was associated with the god Enki and was known for its sacred shrine, the Abazu Temple. Kish was an important city-state that played a role in early Sumerian history. It was mentioned in the Sumerian king lists and ancient texts. Its significance declined over time, but it remained a historical and cultural center. Abab was another city-state known for its literary contributions, including the famous instructions of Shurupak, one of the earliest known works of literature. It was also an important agricultural center. Essen was a city-state that rose to prominence during periods of conflict and instability in Sumar. It became a significant political and cultural center during the Essen Larsa period, that's circa 2000 BC, for those of you who do not keep up with all these timelines. There are so many, how can you? These city-states were often in competition with each other for resources, power, and influence. They each had their own patron deities, temples, and district cultures. Despite their rivalries, they shared a common Sumerian identity, language, and many aspects of culture, including the cuneiform writing, which allowed for communication and trade among those city-states and the wider region of Mesopotamia. The Sumerians were deeply spiritual people. They had a complex and rich religious belief system that was an integral part of their daily life and culture. Their religion revolved around a pantheon of gods and goddesses, each associated with specific aspects of life and the natural world. The Sumerians were polytheistic, meaning they believed in and worshipped multiple gods and goddesses. These deities represented various forces of nature, celestial bodies, and aspects of human life. Anu was considered the god of the heavens and the highest deity in the Sumerian pantheon. He was also depicted as the father of the gods and held a prominent position. Enlil was the god of air, wind, and storms. He was believed to be responsible for natural disasters like floods and droughts. Enlil was considered a powerful and sometimes unpredictable deity. Inanna, the god of love, beauty, and war, was one of the most significant deities. She played a central role in many myths and was associated with both creative and destructive forces. Ereshkigal was the goddess of the underworld. She ruled over the land of the dead, and her domain was seen as a dark and ominous place. Nana was the god of the moon and was associated with wisdom and the passage of time. His symbol was the crescent moon. Ninhursag was the mother goddess and was often associated with fertility, agriculture, and healing. She played a nurturing and protective role in Sumerian mythology. Dumuzid was a god associated with shepherds and agriculture. He was often linked with fertility and the changing seasons, and his myth included elements of death and rebirth. Ninurta was a warrior god associated with agriculture and the plow. He was seen as a protector of the people and their crops. Shamash was the god of the sun and justice. He was considered the ultimate judge who dispensed divine justice and ensured order in society. Geshtanana was a goddess associated with wine and grape harvest. She was also linked to the underworld. Enki was a god of wisdom, fresh water, and magic. He was often depicted as the wise counselor and source of knowledge. The Sumerians built ziggurats for their gods. There were massive steppe temples they used to honor and worship their deities. These temples were often the centers of religious and civic life in Sumerian city-states. Their religious rituals include offerings of food, drink, and incense to appease and honor the gods. Priests and priestesses often played crucial roles in conducting these rituals. Sumerian mythology included a rich collection of stories and myths that explain the origins of the world, the creations of humans, and the interactions between gods and mortals. One of the most famous Sumerian myths is the Epic of Gilgamesh. Sumerians believed in an afterlife in the underworld ruled by Ereshkigal. Proper burial and funeral rituals were essential to ensure a peaceful journey to the afterlife. 
Sumerian religion had a profound influence on the cultures and religions of the ancient Near East, including the later Akkadian, Babylonian, and Assyrian civilizations. Many elements of the Sumerian religious beliefs and mythology can be found in these later cultures and their texts. The ziggurats that the Sumerians used to worship their gods were massive stepped pyramid-like structures that served as temples and religious centers in ancient Mesopotamia, particularly in Sumer, where they were the most prominent. These architectural wonders were a distinctive feature of Sumerian culture. They were primarily religious structures. They were constructed to honor and house the patron deity of a city-state. Each major Sumerian city-state had its own ziggurat dedicated to its primary god or goddess. Ziggurats were characterized by their terrace-stepped structure. They typically consisted of multiple levels of platforms, each smaller than the one below it, creating a ziggurat's distinctive tiered appearance. Most ziggurats were constructed using mud bricks, which were abundant in the region. These bricks were often coated with a layer of baked or glazed bricks to protect the structure from erosion. At the top of the ziggurat, there was a small temple or shrine where religious rituals were conducted. This shrine housed the statue of the deity to whom the ziggurat was dedicated. The temple was accessible via a staircase or ramp built into the ziggurat structure. Ziggurats were seen as symbolic representation of a sacred mountain, and they were believed to serve as a bridge between the earthly realm and the divine. The ziggurat's height and prominence emphasized the connection between mortals and the gods. Building a ziggurat was a massive undertaking that required significant labor and resources. Communities came together to construct these structures, often as acts of devotion and civic pride. Perhaps the most famous ziggurat was that of the Etibananki, located by the city of Babylon. Although Babylon was not a Sumerian city, the Etibananki is often associated with the biblical Tower of Babel. It was dedicated to the god Marduk and was an iconic ziggurat of the time. Some ziggurats had astronomical purposes. The ziggurat at Ur, for example, was associated with the moon god Nana and may have been used for lunar observations. The concept of the ziggurat and its step structure influenced the architecture of later civilizations in Mesopotamia and beyond. For example, the Assyrians and the Babylonians continued to build ziggurats and similar step pyramid structures appeared in Mesoamerica, such as the Mayan pyramids. Many ziggurats have not survived to the present day due to the erodible nature of mud bricks and the passage of time. However, some ziggurats, like the ziggurat of Ur, have been partially reconstructed and are now archaeological sites and tourist attractions. Sumerian ziggurats were not only architectural marvels, but also symbols of the religious and cultural significance in ancient Mesopotamia. They played a central role in the religious and social life of these early civilizations and continue to capture the imagination of people today. But the Sumerians weren't just architects and scribes. They were also masterful farmers. Relying on their fertile banks of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, they pioneered advanced irrigation systems that paved the way for modern agriculture. Agriculture played a central role in the Sumerian civilization, and it was a foundation of their economy and way of life. Sumer was located in the southern part of Mesopotamia between the Tigris and the Euphrates River. This region, known as the Fertile Crescent, had a rich alluvial soil that was ideal for agriculture. However, it was also the subject of periodic flooding, which required sophisticated irrigation systems. The Sumerians are credited with developing advanced irrigation techniques to control the flow of water from the rivers to their fields. They constructed a network of canals, dikes, and levees to distribute water to their crops. This innovation allowed them to cultivate crops year-round, even in arid periods. Sumerian farmers grew a variety of crops, including barley, wheat, emmer wheat, millet, dates, and vegetables like onions and leeks. Barley was a staple crop used to make bread and beer, which were dietary staples. Sumerians also practiced animal husbandry, raising cattle, sheep, and goats. These animals provided not only meat, but also milk, wool, and leather. Sumerians developed the wooden plow, a significant advancement in farming technology. They also used tools such as sickles, hoes, and threshing sedges to cultivate and harvest their crops. Sumerian farmers practiced crop rotation, alternating between different crops to maintain soil fertility. This practice helped prevent soil exhaustion and increased agricultural productivity. Surplus crops were stored in large communal granaries. These storage facilities played a crucial role in food security and were often administered by the city-state authorities. Agriculture required a large labor force. 
Sumerian society was organized into a hierarchy and different social classes contributed to farming, 